So there's a really nifty tool. Let me just make this into an orange color so we can see this. A nifty tool that I think used to be stuck away under the node tool. Uh, you used to have a node tool where you press the A on your keyboard and the corner tool used to press C. Uh, but they've popped it out since uh, later versions. I think so. I'm not 100% not sure of that. But the corner tool has some, has some interesting additional features um, to bring to the party here. Usually you work with nodes and you select the nodes and you go and you convert to curves and then you take one of the nodes and, you know, use the corner tool to shape it. But the corner tool itself has a lot of value in starting off the process using the corner tool. And I'll show you why. If you go to the node tool and you click on an object, it doesn't change to nodes. You've got to convert to curves. However, if you come to the corner tool, which you can press C for also, but I'm going to just click here for the first time. When you press the corner tool, what happens is the corners turn into nodes, which is really interesting. But before we go further, I just want to look on top here. You can see the color, the stroke, and you can see the corner types here, but they grayed out because we haven't done anything. It doesn't know if we want to use it for any specific corner. So we've got to make a selection start the the corner uh, modification and then these will appear here yeah? and the radius is just the radius of the corner that you're creating and then i'll cover bake uh, appearance and the value of having that in the whole process so if i go now to no tool you'll see it shifts back and i can't go work on those nodes okay so i have to first editing the corner tool and then you'd be able to have the flexibility of working with the node tool automatically so I'm going to go to the corner tool, click there, select this corner. Now, when I start to hover over it, you'll see there's a little corner. The icons there and there's this little line there that indicates that it's the corner. So if I grab that with my left mouse button and I drag it, just look what, wait, let me let go here. Look what happens on top here. <laughs> I've actually moved it micro millimeters. I'm going to go control Z just to move it right back. Um, I don't have a perfect steady hand there. So I wanted to show you that you must just look on top here what happens when I make the move on this here. If I make it, you see it has the curve, which is the default corner shaping. When I let go with my left mouse button, you're going to see that this whole panel changes on top here. What it's actually done is it's changed to the node editing tool which means I can go to, actually you see it, it hops out of corner tool to node editing tool. So I could go to this node and treat it like any other node would be. I could take this and move it. So I haven't converted this object to curves. However, I can now edit in the node editing tool once I've modified one of the corners with a corner tool. So I'm going to go control Z just to get it back there. Okay, so that, that's actually quite interesting, but I want to get back to the corner tool now. So I'm going to press C on the keyboard, or I could just click here again, but I'm going to press C, and there I'm back into the corner tool. You see the icons came back, but here this area is no longer grayed out because we now have an active corner in the object we're working with. So if I draw left mouse button, just draw a block over here to select that, you'll see it hops over to this edge. Now that's the default edge. If I do any other corners, it will turn into that rounded area there. I'm going to just go through these here. If I go square, it will be square, rounded. And you see there, that's the radius of that area. If I go to that, you see the different shapes. Okay, so those are just different corner shapes that we have. Now I'm going to leave this one on, on this curve area just to make another demonstration. Here again, Many of us would do one corner and that's what we want the corner tool for. But the power lies also in that you can do multiple corners at a time. Now, in this case, we only got four and I'll show you when we get much more than four. It could be more of a complex shape we create. But if I go and I select these two nodes now, OK, and I'm in the corner tool mode, OK, I'm in that mode. If I select this one, or the one on the right, 
what's going to happen is the one that hasn't been moved, the corner tool, will go to the default rounded shape, while this one will retain the modified shape that we had. So if I come here and I start to do that, can you see? That's actually quite interesting. If I, on this one, I make this selection, and maybe let me do that shape. And if I just want to select these two and this one here, yeah, it's going to be difficult to draw a box around them and try and exclude this one while including that. So the easy way of doing that, that's just a selection option. You press the Alt key on the PC and it will create a marquee tool that you can start drawing and then you can just draw around those areas. So that's just by the way. So we have those three. So in essence, if I grab this and move it now, this one's got one corner type, that's corner type, and this would be a rounded default. So if I go there, can you see what happens? So you can do multiple modifications at the same time and have them based on different corner settings, or you could have them all as the same. So I'm going to just choose this one, or I'll choose these two and flip them back to the original. Click it there. And now actually you could see the shape taking place here if, if we do this. Or oh, let me just press Alt, take these here. If you do, uh, I made a mistake. I took the one in the corner I shouldn't have taken. There we go. So if we take those there, you can see that other kind of shapes that you can get into, you know shapes like this you can make and it's nice and rounded on sides and pointed at the side and you could come here and probably make this one a little rounded here if you want to or whatever but the idea is that you can do these multiple settings okay so i'm going to just clear this off because i want to make a demonstration in another video i was undoing like 400 times to get back to the original and I didn't want to go down the history button of moving back because I didn't know exactly where I wanted to stop. So I'll create this one. And let's say we're going to go corner tool. We press C, select all of them, pull them in. And I'm going to now hops to that. I go back to my corner tool and I want to create those corners. Okay, there's a nice, nice plate you can use. And now I can, when I click off it, I can create a, this is now like a parametric object, okay? So if I go now to the Node tool, if I click onto the Node tool, you're going to see that I have the ability to edit now. And I haven't gone and converted to curves. And it's all because I have the corner tool, one of those things I've modified. Now, look at this. This is very interesting. So if you've got a shape like this, but you want to modify other corners here. Now at this point it's, for example, this side here, it's, oops, let me just go here. That was the node tool. Let me just press C. There we go. At this point here, this edge is the only corner that has been affected. But when I do that, I'm creating now multiple corners over here. So how do I get to be able to edit all of these corners? And that's where this bake appearance comes in. If I say bake this, it turns it almost like converting to curves. So if I select that and I go bake appearance, look what's going to happen. It's going to turn every corner into a node area. Okay, isn't that cool? And that now opens the idea of we, if we add corners onto each of these areas, it actually will be very interesting. Now there is a curved area over here. And if I don't want to select that, it wouldn't make too much difference because it is a curve already. But I can do the same with Alt and just go around there and select those and bypass that one. But it's, it's not a train smash because it's a curve. It doesn't get that much affected. But now I've selected all these outside nodes and I'm going to go to the corner tool and I am going to select that's what we have concaved. And there we go. And you notice that it does something without me touching. That's because there was a, an amount in here. If this was on zero, nothing would have happened. Okay, but what we can do is, is go there and I scroll the mouse over and it will just by the measurement go up in that area. Now you can see we can do quite a few interesting shapes with it. 
Just an interesting thing is if you click here and you use the slider and you go back and you come to the maximum, in this case with this shape it only goes up to 4.2 millimeters in radius. You can't go further by stretching this. However, if you hover over here or double click and tap in a, a new value, it will go beyond this area. So I'm going to scroll and it's just going to other direction and we'll take it further than that limitation that we have there. Okay, there, there we go. So if I go there and say I'm, I'm happy with that, whatever that shape is, um, I can work with that. But I'm going to show you something. I'm going to just go in and go do the usual. You know, you can modify the, maybe put an outside edge on it. I like five as a mitre. It makes the edges nice and sharp and scale with object. But look at this now, I'm going to come here and I am going to go to the node tool and I'm going to hover over here and click. Okay, now you see that if you know editing on nodes, that is a, a, a round area. If I pull down here, it's going to kind of do this, this bending. What I want to do is just pull a straight thing down. So I select that node and I convert it to a sharp node. And then if I select that and keep shift just to constrain it, it will pull a nice area down. It's almost looking like a Batman or a butterfly wing. Very interesting. So can you see how you can get a complex shape like this, like wings, um, by using these little curves? So you could do this and create multiple little scallops at the edges. But this has got a nice curve here because of these corners here that have these modified nodes. I made this straight because I want to show you if I go here and I select, I'm going to go to the Curves tool and press C. So I come onto the Curves node tool. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go onto Rounded. And or I could have just started dragging. If I go up here, you're going to see it does something like that. And if I go and I change the shape, look what's happening. Change it to that. Change it to that. Can you see it's very interesting what you can come up with. So if I go there and I grab that tool, isn't that amazing? So you can create a tool like this using all the curves. Now, now these edge nodes here, um, okay, this is just by the way, if you want them to become sharper here, you most likely, I would go to curves and I would go and modify stuff in there. But I, this this lesson is not for that particular thing but just see the potential that you have with these nice warm curves that you have and they're all because of this corner tool that you're using and then once you're happy with it you can go and bake the appearance and if i bake appearance we're then sitting with these areas again i can go there and make that a sharp tool constrain it let me constrain it there we go so I've made something, whatever that is. Probably you can put two eyes here and it would be a, <laughs> a bat or something like that. Eh? Okay, so hopefully this gives you a bit of inspiration to use the corner tool and be creative with it. You know, think about options of how you can do multiple corners at the same time to create these things. So yes, uh, have a fantastic day. Be blessed and shalom to you all.